Nestled in the foothills of Colorado, Thunder Valley Motocross is known as one of the most breathtaking tracks in the outdoor circuit. James Stewart, with dominating performance early in the season, looks to keep the momentum alive in Colorado. Everything rolling the Stewart's way early in the 2012 season. Tommy Hahn and number 21 and Jake Weimer comes up the inside and James Stewart is going to work. I mean, if I'm Stewart, I'm out front and basically once again, I'm riding my own race. I yeah. get past these obstacles, which are the other riders, and I get a clean track and I put down hard, fast laps. And down Stewart, it. it is Stewart who has gone down while leading this race. James Stewart is on the ground. We have riders all making their way around him. Tim, he's 4-0 for the year and he's getting up deep in this pack. James Stewart is in the Suzuki pits and something is wrong. We're not sure if it's the machine or James himself. Yeah, I mean, his initial response is that a spectator ran across the track. He was going to go to the inside where he, where he went, but a spectator ran across the track, so he changed and went to the outside. And when he did that, he lost the front because it's real soft and muddy out there. I think he's going to try to ride his hand sore, but uh, you know he's a tough kid, so I think he's going to try to come out there in second moto and try to try to get some points anyway. Oh, f***ing We should have had that other tire on, probably. He says he don't like these intermediates that much. There's proof right there. He looked like he was Yeah, his, his hand. Yeah. Is he, but I think he'll be good for the next I don't know yet. Okay. Got to get ready just in case. Yeah, yeah. After what could be called a perfect start to the season, four moto wins, both fastest practice lap times, and the confidence to do it again, James went down hard. He's no stranger to the outdoors and understands what it takes to endure a grueling season. The team prepared for Moto2 as they awaited the final decision. The status is we're waiting until the last second for the gate drop of the second 450 moto, but uh, James is in the bus. His hand is, is hurt a little bit, and uh, we're just like, hey, it's... You know, let's just wait and go home and see what see what the doctor says, you know. So at this point we're like it's not worth taking a chance, you know, to injure it further. So but he wants to ride. He's like right now I'm still waiting right here, like he's gonna come out with his gear on. The championship post, I mean right now it's James is down as we sit right now, he's down like I think it's fourteen points. After this, if, if Ryan wins it, it'll be like thirty six and I mean, there's a lot of racing left. We've only had two races. This is the third one. Despite severe weather rolling through the area after Moto 1, fans line the fences and surrounding vantage points to get a look at the starting line. To their disappointment, James Stewart was not on the gate. Instead, Ryan Dungey will take an early lead. As James watched his biggest competitor walk away with a win, the impact of the crash began to set in. With Ryan Dungey on top of the podium, the team works to keep James's confidence on high. Uh, at that point, and it was just to go from Winning everything, you know, to coming in, to being the fastest, to like down on the ground, out of both motos, it was pretty difficult. Hey, you know, this is motocross and it's racing and you never know until it's over what's going to happen. Yeah, this thing happened, but it's been a constant improvement every yeah. step of the way. Oh, yeah. So well, the last seven days has obviously been, uh, you know, difficult, you know, coming off of, you know, 1-1 Texas. You know, a good week of riding Florida, you know, first time I've been home over a month. So it was nice and, and uh, you know, at Thunder Valley, you know, set the fast lap times in both practices. Um, you know, got like a 10th place start, came up through those guys really quick. I was out front um, pulling away and then uh, boom, it hit. Um, I was, uh, got ran across the track, um, you know, and then ended up kind of getting kicked going down the hill and losing my front end for about 50 yards. So. I was down. Uh, just getting ready for the first moto here at High Point. You know, hopefully uh, we can have a good race today. A couple of motos, but overall it's uh, looking okay. You know, we qualified good in the practice. Only basically got one good lap in the practice because of guys getting in the way a little bit here and there. But uh, he was able to pull out a good lap at the end there. Just just barely got a good lap in. So, but other than that, the track's pretty good. It's going to be hard, hard, and maybe one line a little bit. Still favoring a sore wrist, James hoped to get the start and the lead in order to minimize the impact to his throttle hand. A bad start set him on a mission to come back up through the pack. As the moto progressed, the strength of his wrist quickly deteriorated. He 
besides having the the arm situation it wasn't that you know it wasn't wasn't really frustrated you know I you know I was salvaging points I was more frustrated in knowing that I felt good you know about halfway in the motor my condition felt good but my body was you know my arm was just beat down James is uh, his ability to uh take a bike to really where no one's going before. Uh, for, for us from an engineering standpoint, it's fantastic because, like I said, we know a lot about our bike, but we've learned a whole new chapter with James. Okay, that's good. Yeah, Moto2 coming up. I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Maybe we can get a little bit better start this time. For the second week in a row, a last minute decision left James Stewart off the starting gate in Moto2. He was getting pumped up. He was like, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> but um, who else is in there? Just mom and dad? Or? Yeah. But I want to go talk to him. Is that, I mean, you need that strength in the arm, so. All right, well, last week at Thunder Valley, you know, he had that little bit of a get off coming down that blind jump. It's a pretty fast part of the track. Hurt his hand. You know, took a couple days off this week. Uh, rode a couple of times, but he just doesn't have uh, the grip strength in his hand to to race even though we rode the first moto here he wanted to ride he's in his gear right now he still wants to ride the second moto but he just doesn't have the strength to hold on to the handlebars when you look at motorsports you know the reality of motorsports is that one weekend you could be on top of the world the next weekend you can be at the bottom of the bucket and you got to be able to ride that wave up and down and in between and so yeah we had you know those four races were awesome james was feeling good on the bike and you know, even at Lakewood, he felt great on the bike and it was working good and he was going fast. Something happened. Something that nobody could have expected happened, happened. You know, I talked to Webb uh, for a little bit and, uh, you know, he felt like he was just watching me ride and he just felt like it wasn't right. Uh, then, and then just kind of when I was going off and then I, I still ended up getting dressed. I was actually going to go out there and race again. And then, uh, you know, my dad kind of talked to me and he told me it's probably not the best thing to go out there and do it. And I think, you know, it was more, it was also in my decision. I just kind of knew, like, I, I didn't feel like I could do it. You know, like like I said, if it was just pain, I, I, could, I could suck that up. But, you know, when you're riding with numb hands, that's, that's a whole different animal. And, you know, I just felt like, you know, with the situation and how many points we are down, that you can try to risk that, you know, for, and being out here because we want to be, I, I didn't think it was the right time to try to do that. And I, I didn't feel like I was going to make it. You know, I felt like if anything, I would pull off or probably crash. So um, I didn't want to have to go through that. And so we just made a decision not to go in. Next time on James Stewart Outsider. We might have to take a few weeks off and let the hand heal up, maybe go see another doctor and get a couple opinions and see if there is something that's a little more wrong than what was first diagnosed, I don't know. But uh, we'll just take it one week at a time and see.